Good morning, my name is Peter Shields and on behalf of Airmet Scientific, I'm pleased to welcome you all to today's webinar, Headlines in Occupational Hygiene Air Sampling. So I'll now hand over to Adam Atkinson, the Business Manager from SGS Leader Consulting for his presentation. Thanks, Peter. Today my presentation is going to focus on monitoring of volatile organic compounds or VOCs using passive sampling techniques. VOCs are compounds with high vapour pressure and therefore a low boiling point. Under ambient conditions, these compounds will evaporate from the liquid or solid form and enter the surrounding air. The compounds are generally organic, which means that they contain carbon covalently bonded to other molecules. There is a wide range of compounds that fall into this category. They can be naturally occurring or anthropogenic. They are used as part of our daily activities and therefore this class of compounds are often found where we are, including our homes and workplaces. Many are known to cause adverse health effects and some are known carcinogens. Due to these compounds' ability to rarely vitalise and enter the atmosphere, inhalation is a common exposure pathway. To measure concentrations of VOCs in the atmosphere, there are numerous methods. There are methods specifically designed for measuring VOCs in ambient air and, and to assess vapour intrusion. There are also methods specifically designed to assess workers' exposure. The difference in the methods is generally the required detection limits. Ambient air and vapour intrusion need methods that are capable of reaching parts per billion detection limits, whereas generally workplace methods need to be reported into the PPM range. Broadly, methods for measuring VOCs in air can be categorised into two, two groups based on how the VOCs are collected. The first is active sampling, which involves drawing the air into a bag or a canister or through a tube, filter or other media. The second is passive sampling, which works by diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of, in this example, VOCs from areas of high concentration to low concentration. The passive sampler consists of a diffusing, diffusion boundary that the molecules must pass through and an absorbing media which traps the VOC compounds. As the VOCs are trapped onto the absorbing media, they are removed from the diffusion boundary, creating an area of low concentration or no concentration that further VOCs can diffuse into. As this process works by diffusion, no pumps are required and this greatly simplifies the collection of the sample. Fick's, law, Fick's first law of diffusion is used to describe this principle. As part of the principle, each VOC will have a diffusion coefficient that is known, also known as an uptake rate. Um, the uptake rate is the rate which the VOCs will diffuse onto the badge or units for the uptake rate are expressed as a volume per time sample. The uptake rate allows for the airborne concentration to be determined. Diffusion, requirement of, diff of diffusive samples is the free movement of air. Stagnant air can reduce the sample's uptake rate, thereby affecting the accuracy of the result. Passive samplers are ideal for long-term expo exposure. Samplers designed for workplace health assessments are ideal for 15 minutes to an eight-hour exposure. Passive samplers designed for environmental monitoring applications can be deployed for much longer, and in some environmental samplers have been validated for up to a 30-day deployment. To be able to sample for such an extended period of time, these samples must, over, must overcome moisture in the atmosphere. Sorbents such as charcoal will rarely absorb moisture. Uptake of moisture affects the passive sample's ability to function correctly by deactivating the sorbent if the sorbent is hydrophilic. For long-term monitoring, for long-term monitoring, effects of moisture are combated by selecting sorbents that are hydrophobic or using membranes that are impervious to water but allow VOCs to pass through. 
If we use Vic's law of diffusion, the longer a passive sampler is de deployed, the lower the reporting limit. That being said, though, there is a limit to the time a sampler should be deployed. The time limit is based on, on when back diffusion starts to become significant and will affect the result, accuracy of the result. However, capacity of passive samplers per amount of sorbent is much greater than that of active samplers. With active sampling, airflow through the tube displaces VOC along the sorbent bed and eventually compounds will travel the entire length of the sorbent bed and exit the tube. The analysis of passive sampling badges for VOCs can be broadly then categorised into two into, into two groups depending on how the VOCs are analysed. The first is solvent desorption. This involves using a solvent to desorb the VOC, VOCs prior to analysis. And a more recent technique, thermal desorption, which uses heat and inert, inert gas to desorb the VOCs prior to the analysis. First, I'll discuss solvent desorption. A desorbing solvent, normally carbon disulfide, is added to the sample media to release the trapped VOCs into the solvent. The solvent is then analysed by an instrument such as a gas chromatograph, which can identify the, Z the VOCs and quantifi quantify the amount in the solvent, which can then be used to calculate the concentration on the badge. A gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, or GCMS, works by vaporising the injected solvent. It then separates and identifies the VOCs based on their boiling points and mass. The amount of solvent that can be analysed by a GCMS is only a small fraction of the overall solvent used to dissolve the badge. This is effectively a dilution of the entire VOCs collected on the badge. That being said, GCMS is a sensitive instrument and is still capable of reporting results down to the sub-microgram per badge, which generally correlates to sub-milligrams per cubic metres for workplace badges. This technique of analysis does have a wide anal analytical range, making it especially well suited when high concentration VOCs need to be measured. Typical absorbents used for solvent desorption are anisorb and charcoal. These badges have a relatively long holding time once sampled, but should, al should always be stored in VOC env environments and kept refrigerated until analysis. The results provided by these types of samplers is well documented and the use of the solvent desorption passive samplers have been included in many occupational hygiene methods. A drawback is the often requirement to use carbon disulfide as part of the analysis. Firstly, it is a hazardous chemical and known to cause many serious adverse health effects to those exposed to it. I find it quite ironic that a toxic VOC is used to measure VOC exposure. Carbon disulfide is unfortunately required and can't be substituted because it offers superior extraction efficiency of the VOCs off the sorbent media. This is because carbon disulfide is a very polar, one of the reasons is carbon disulfide is a very polar chemical. So, sorry, it's a very non-polar chemical. If polar compounds need to be analysed, then we'll need to modify the polarity of our desorption solvent, and this is generally done by adding a percent of a second polar solvent, such as isopropanol. Therefore, some target suites may need more than one badge to be analysed by solvent desorption if there is a wide range of compounds with different polarities. Benzene is an impurity of in commercially available carbon disulfide. <clears throat> a higher grade and therefore more expensive carbon disulfide will contain a much lower level of benzene. Benzene is a target compound in most VOC exposure monitoring campaigns due to its abundance in the environment and the fact that it is a known carcinogen. 
Therefore, it's critical for the analysis of VOCs that only the highest chemical grade of carbon disulfide is used and that the level of benzene in the solvent is well below the required reporting limit. Laboratories should test their solvents on a regular basis to understand what limits, what levels they have in their solvent and should not correct for these. Another drawback with, with using carbon disulfide is that it's a solvent in itself, which means it appears on the chromatogram as a solvent peak. Therefore, VOCs that are near the carbon disulfide cannot be as accurately re reported. As required by most VOC occupational hygiene methods, results need to be corrected for desorption efficiency. This involves spiking a known amount of VOCs into a badge or tube and then determining the amount recovered as a percent. This percent is then applied to the actual sample results to recover, to correct for the recovery. The desorption efficiency tube should be forwarded to the lab so they can provide you this data. Uh, thermal desorption. This process, as I mentioned earlier, works by heating the tube to release the VOC compounds. Therefore, it is a solvent-free process. The, re the released VOCs are then concentrated onto a secondary focusing trap. As the name suggests, the focusing trap focuses the VOCs to allow for sharper compound peaks when, when it becomes to the time for the GC analysis. This leads to greater, this helps lead to greater sensitivity and, and easier identification. The focusing trap, the next process, is, the next step is to dissolve the focusing trap. And once this happens, a portion of the VOC sample is, is split and absorbed onto a second tube or a recollection tube the remaining portion of the sample is transferred to the GC analysis for, the, for analysis. The recollection system is a relatively new to thermal desorption analysis. This allows for a portion of the sample to be reanalyzed later if required. Traditionally, thermal desorption analysis, when, t when US EPA T0017 was written, was a single shot analysis. Once the tube had been dissolved, you only had a single chance to analyze the sample. For example, if a result was not as expected, there was no possibility of retesting. Recollection allows us to retain a sample after the primary analysis. The advent of recollection, which allows for the reanalysis, has greatly increased the robustness, robustness of thermal desorption as an analytical technique. From a thermal, from a total line chromatogram produced from, from a thermal desorption analysis, this one has the peaks labelled, but many more compounds are present than just the benzene that was interest for this fence line monitoring of refi of a, of, at a refinery for ambient air VOCs. So from a total ion chromatograph, we can extract the ions of interest. In this case, we can pull out the, the, the BTEX compounds. Compared to solvent desorption, thermal desorption is a much more sensitive method capable of detecting VOCs in the sub nanogram per tube or badge level. The samples can be deployed for extended periods of time this is primarily due to how the samplers manage the moisture. Many of the new sorbent medias for thermal desorption are hydrophobic, so moisture is less likely to deactivate them. As mentioned, recollection allows for reanalysis, which greatly increases the analytical range of the technique. Thermal, de thermal desorption uses heat to extract the VOCs from the tube, therefore, it's solvent free analysis, which eliminates many of the associated issues with using solvents, such as peak coevolution and impurities in the solvent. It also allows for a wider range of compounds to be analysed in a single analysis, 
as there is no selection of solvent required. No correction dis dis dissolution efficiency is also required as the analytical standards are prepared in exactly the same manner, i.e. we thermally dissolve tubes of matching, spiked tubes of, of matching sorbent media. Due to the sensitivity of this technique, additional care though is required when handling and chipping the samplers. This is because VOCs are present everywhere and the level in the environment is enough to contaminate tubes. Therefore, samplers should always be sent in aircon, airtight containers and with some means of scrubbing VOCs. Samplers are also required to be pre-certified prior to shipping to confirm the media is free of VOCs. Again, this is due to the low level reporting limits. Overall, thermal desorption tube passive sampling isn't ideal for long for short-term and long-term monitoring applications such as indoor and outdoor air programs when low level detection limits are required. Calculation of results for passive samplers for both solvent and thermal desorption is similar. The laboratory analysis will first determine the mass of VOCs on the sample media. Using the validated uptake rates, the exposure time and sample volume can be calculated. Each VOC compound will have its own uptake rate. This is absolute, it is absolutely critical that the exposure time is recorded for the sampling. For each compound, the mass of VOC is divided by the volume sample. This will produce a result in mass per volume such as microgram per cubic meter. Further calculations can be done if required to convert to PPM or PPB. Alternatively, if you don't want to carry out these calculations, ask your lab to do it. Remember to provide them the exposure time at, the, at sample receipt. With any monitoring program, QC is, an, is important and needs to be considered. Passive sampling and in particular thermal desorption have additional QC requirements that need to be considered. Taking a field dupe is, is straightforward and usually means that two samplers will, can be deployed side by side. For low level methods such as thermal desorption, the QC allows us to demonstrate that we have not contaminated during transport by the use of trip lengths. We don't have residual concentration or background on the VOCs by supplying certificates of cleanliness with the samplers prior to analysis. QC in the, in the lab should also be conduct, conducted to demonstrate the lab process and handling has not contributed to any VOCs particularly when performing solvent extractions. So the use of method blanks, for example. So to conclude this presentation, passive sampling is ideal for monitoring for extended periods of time, provides an average con concentration for the time deployed, capable of measuring a wide concentration of VOCs at, a, at very low concentrations, applicable to a wide range of VOCs. Thank you all for coming along and thanks very much Adam for your presentation today.